Hey guys, welcome back to Freedom Homestead. It is Thursday evening and we are preparing for a winter storm. They are saying we are going to get ice and snow and uh, winds along with the ice that can cause power outages. So right now I am prepping. We do have plenty of food that we can eat on while if the power does go out, but I still like to have some things homemade and ready just in case. So I've got some, um, these are chocolate chip oatmeal bars. Um, this is just some chili. We actually had this for supper tonight, but I made sure to make a lot. We've got leftovers that we can eat on tomorrow. I also have a little bit of black beans right here that they were dry, but now they're cooked. Um, and I'm going to whip up a taco soup to also have in the refrigerator that can be heated up. And you know what? If the power doesn't go out, I don't have to cook, so <laughs> it works out. Also, I have banana bread in the oven which is looking a little weird and I think it's because my bananas were frozen and I didn't let them completely fall. But you know what, it's gonna eat just the same. And then over here I have our ice maker going and what I'm trying to do, first of all, our ice maker doesn't work. And so when the good folks at Avalon Bay reached out and said, hey, if you want to pick anything from our website and review it for uh, your viewers, then you know, then we'll send it to you. And I saw the ice maker and I was like, I would really love to not have to fill ice trays. So it just worked out perfectly. But also I was thinking of like canning season, you know, all of those canning recipes where you have to ice down the cucumbers and the peppers and all of those things. And also deer, uh, when we're hunting and you have to um, ice down the meat. Uh, so I just thought this would just really be a very wise choice for our family and it has been awesome so what I'm doing not only to make sure that we have ice in the freezer yes even if it's cold and the power goes out we're still gonna want to ice our drinks well at least I will because I love ice just to have a lot of things in your freezers is supposed to help it stay cold longer so I thought I'm gonna make up some bags of ice and just have them in the deep freeze and in our freezer in here and then hopefully if the power does go out that will keep things colder longer so we'll see how that goes but let me tell you a little bit about the ice maker really quick I'm gonna show you how this ice maker works in case you're thinking about um, purchasing a portable ice maker all right so how this works it's really simple uh, you plug it in you also pour in some water down here in this reservoir here and it sucks up the water into the bin here I don't know if you can see it right there where those little metal rods are sticking down okay so the rods freeze up like the rods get super duper cold and so the ice that's around it freezes around that rod so then when it's whenever it's done forming its ice cube it drains the rest of the water from around it and then the rod heats up just enough that the ice cube slips off and I know this because I'm a nerd and I watched the whole thing happen <sighs> Boys. Um, anyway and so I think it makes like nine ice cubes at a time and then it drops it down in this basket um, this is not a freezer uh, so this will not stay frozen <clears throat> so uh, as it makes ice I just put it in a bag and I don't mind that it's not a freezer I wasn't really looking for a freezer I was just looking for an ice maker um, so but if if you don't take it out and it starts to melt then the water just melts right back into the uh, reservoir melts right back into the reservoir and then it recycles so it's it's pretty great I really like it it makes I think I think it's 23 pounds of ice a day um, so if you're someone that entertains a lot you hunt you fish you can and you're always finding yourself having to buy ice this is a really wise investment i think for your homestead um so if you're interested in looking at it check the uh description box below for that link um but yeah and this for filling up our freezer before a possible power outage is a really great prepping tool as well oh here it comes watch 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 okay now watch what it does that little that little spatula of that little flap right there is going to scoop it up and dump it into the... Hey guys, look! So cute! There you go! Okay, and so now, if you can see, it's starting to fill back up with water. So, anyway, that's awesome. I really like it. And it came with this really cute little handy dandy ice scoop, which is nice. Okay. So, oh, I was gonna tell y'all. 
I was, um, I had every intention of pressure canning today, but I got so busy doing some other things, making sure that we had everything we would need in case the power went out, that I haven't gotten to it. I still may do it. I mean, it's early. It's, what time is it? It's only seven o'clock, so. I'm going to interrupt this recording just to show you that I didn't can that night, but I did can the next day after the snow had fallen. I got 16 pints of pinto beans and four pints of deer stew, and I did not record it because it was my first time, but it was successful. Um, and I am so, so excited that I'm finally not scared of it anymore. Um, and I am ready to pressure can all the things. I think I'm gonna do stew next. Um, I'm gonna do one session of stew and then maybe record my second session. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and all my all my jars are ready. I just have to get the canner up and loaded and get the beans rinsed and everything anyway um, But I wanted to show you so some friends of ours were watching our live stream when I was talking about canning and how I'm like Getting closer and closer to being able to do it because you know It takes a certain amount of courage to do it and um, anyway our friend Nanda over at Bonterre Homestead uh said uh, she heard me say that I just needed to get a rack so I can stack my pints and um, she then called me afterwards and she was like you know you really also need a pressure regulator because the canner that we have comes with a 15 pound pressure gauge but where we live we only need a 10 pound uh, pressure to can safely and so she got me this pressure regulator so I can set it to 10 pounds of pressure and not have to be standing there the whole time I'm canning and babysit the uh, the canner. So I thought that was really nice. Then not only that, but my good friend Susan, she sent me this book called the Amish Canning Cookbook. And this is, it's really, really awesome. It's got more than just pressure canning recipes in there, but um, she had, Susan, my friend, had some really awesome ideas that I could do with the um, recipes that are in here. And I kinda don't wanna tell you just yet because this might become a series. But um, anyway, there were some uh, really good recipes in here that she was excited to share with me to do for uh, pressure canning. So anyway, I'm really excited about that. And she also sent these chalk, top, uh, chalk tops from Mason Tops. Um, they're just jar, they're mason jar lids that are chalkboard, so you can write on them with chalk pens. <laughs> so she sent me chalk pens as well. These are not intended for canning, but um, you can certainly, I'm sure you could do like uh, vacuum sealing or just storing some dry goods in there, but they're super cute and I can't wait to use it. So that is it. I gotta check on this bread. It be looking weird, y'all. It be looking weird. I hope you all stay safe, stay warm. Bye, y'all. Good job, buddy.